When it comes to game AI, making the right decision can get complicated fast. It's easy to say that when a sim is hungry, they should eat. But what if they're both hungry and bored? Which needs should they satisfy first? And considering there are multiple ways to satisfy each need, such as making a meal versus ordering pizza, which specific action is the right choice here? Or what if all of their needs are reasonably satisfied, so they don't have anything that needs immediate attention? Rather than stand and stare in the space, they should do something. And in a combat encounter, even a modest engagement might leave a unit with several options that all seem decent on the surface. Should a unit run up to an opponent to deal strong melee damage but risk exposing themselves, or should they hang back in cover and opt for a weaker ranged attack? And how should their current health and ammo impact this decision? It's a lot to figure out, and a simple state machine or behavior tree with some extra if statements really won't cut it here. The situations your AI can find itself in are just too varied and murky. At best, you'll have something extremely predictable, and therefore both boring and exploitable. At worst, your AI just won't work how you want it to. This is where Utility AI can be useful. Utility AI tries to answer the question, what's the best action I can take right now, by allowing for objective comparison between actions that can be as similar or as different as the game demands. This objectivity comes from assigning a normalized score in the range 0 to 1 to each possible action an entity can take in that moment, and then selecting the action with the highest score for execution. The score is typically referred to as the action's utility, hence the name for this technique. We use the term utility because how useful that action is will depend on the game state in that moment. A melee attack may always do a lot of damage, but if no enemy is within range to attack, then it has no utility to us because we can't actually apply that damage to anything. Conversely, if an enemy unit is right next to us, is low on health, and is weak to our attack type, this melee attack is now extremely useful. And if another enemy is also within attack range but has more health, our melee attack still has some utility since it can still be used to reduce an enemy's health, it just won't have as much as attacking the more vulnerable enemy. It's also worth noting that Utility AI is not concerned with how to take a given action, only what action it should take, meaning that the concepts behind it are fully compatible with whatever technique you're using to execute actions in your game, whether that be a state machine or some other mechanism. The AI will simply say, this is the action to take, and then your game code is responsible for parsing that into actionable data however you see fit, making it a highly flexible system. More than that, because we're not concerned with the how, only the what, this system allows for exposing the associated levers and knobs to designers and other non-technical people involved in the project, allowing for rapid iteration and testing without having to make any modifications to the code base every time you want to tweak something. So scoring is where all the magic happens in a utility system, and how you decide to convert the varied data of your game state into a normalized number is everything to this process. Unit positions, stat values, items in your vicinity, chance to hit, it can all play a part, and one of the first steps in building a utility system is figuring out how you'll access the current game state, typically referred to as the context, and then turn the relevant data into numbers. This process can vary depending on the game, but as a general solution, Dave Mark, one of the experts on utility AI systems design, has discussed the idea of a clearinghouse, a place where you can ask for data from anywhere in the game and receive it back in a normalized state. This keeps you from having to have individual units or AI controllers all talking to each other directly and really just making a big mess of your game. If we want to score a healing action, for instance, we might ask the clearinghouse for the unit's current health as a percentage of their total health, so we know if we even need to be concerned with healing right now, combine that with information about how much health we'll recover from the given action, and then calculate a score based on those factors. But how do you decide what score exactly to assign to an action when there are multiple things to consider? What makes healing 25% of your health when you have 30% left different from healing 40% of your health when you've got half of it left? The key is to score each consideration separately, and then multiply all of the scores together to get a final score for that action. But rather than just throwing arbitrary numbers to get a score, each consideration can and should be modeled on a curve. To properly score our healing action, let's first look at the utility of healing based on how low on health we are. We could start out by defining a simple inverse linear curve where we get a score of 0 when at max health, and a score of 1 when on the verge of death meaning we won't even try to heal when at max health, but we'll almost certainly do so when we're on our last few hit points. 
Not bad for a first attempt, as we should see our unit heal when low on health, but it does probably give too much weight to healing when we're still almost at full health. Instead, we may want a curve that scores healing when at high health lower, but really ramps things up once we get to a critical point. Now when health is really high, this consideration will rank healing actions low, but as health decreases further, our score will quickly ramp up. As we playtest our game, we'll continue to tweak the parameters of the curve further, or even change the type of curve itself again to get the effect we want. For looking at the utility of how much we'll heal from an action, we'll again plot the percent of our total health we'll heal on some curve and tweak the parameters accordingly. Want to consider more inputs such as the action point cost of different actions, cooldown times, etc. Just throw in more curves to score each independent consideration and blend all scores together. Or maybe you have a condition that means no matter what, do not select this action. In that case, you can score the consideration at zero, and multiplying it with any other considerations regardless of their scores will give your final action a score of zero, meaning it should never be chosen. So that's how we can do some basic action scoring. And while that's enough to get an AI together that can make some pretty complex decisions, it's not always quite what we want. Always picking the top scoring action, while effective, may make for an AI that feels too predictable or maybe just a bit too optimal for player enjoyment. One easy way to add a bit of variety to the decision-making process is to apply a bit of randomness regarding how the decision is made. Rather than always picking the top scoring action, randomly choosing any action within some percentage of the top scoring action can add variety to the AI while still keeping it on the right track. This is just a simple example of how to add variety, but you can go a lot further with the concept. In The Sims, the amount of randomness varies with how dire the needs of a sim are. So when a sim really needs to go to the bathroom, they are likely to pick the most optimal way to satisfy it. But in a less critical situation, there can be a lot more randomness as to what action they'll take, which is then further varied based on the various traits that a sim may have. But maybe not all types of actions are always equal, or you want to limit the AI's options to a certain subset of actions in certain contexts. In these cases, we can assign each action to a bucket based on whatever delineation we want, score each bucket and select one the same way we would an individual action, and then only score and choose from the actions within the bucket we selected. The Sim series uses bucketing to help ensure high priority needs such as a very low stat are appropriately prioritized, and the Zoo Tycoon series has used a version of bucketing to keep their AI generic while also limiting actions to those that are appropriate for the context, such as when a person is at a show. In fact, in Zoo Tycoon 2 in particular, dying is actually just a bucket that gets priority over any other buckets so that an animal won't accidentally, uh, wake up. Sometimes though, a bucket isn't quite the right call either, as we still want our AI to evaluate all options fairly, but maybe just nudge it towards certain types of actions without ruining our existing scoring curves we put together. In these cases, weighting actions based on their category is an option. These weights can be used to multiply final action scores, even going outside of the range 0 to 1 to keep our priorities straight. Say we want to have an aggressive enemy that strongly favors attacks over defensive or idle animations unless the situation is really dire. We could assign a weight of 2 to offensive abilities and a weight of 1 to all others. When it's time to score our actions, we'll multiply the raw action scores by each weight, which will result in doubling the score for attacks and make them that much more likely to be selected. And that's a look at utility AI in detail and how different games use it. If you want to learn more, including tips for implementing it in your own game, Game AI Pro and Dave Mark's GDC Talks are both great places to start. Links will be below.